Hi everyone, Scott with Cyberscribe.org and in this video I'm going to give you a high level overview of what a buffer overflow is and I'll give you an example or some examples of, uh, of them in action. So what it is is buffer overflows are, it's an exploit where the uh, you have a hard-coded section of memory and what you're doing is the input in that section is going to exceed that hard-coded number. What will happen is the next location in memory is going to take the rest of that, uh, you know, of that input or whatever, and that's the overflow. So, for example, let's say you have a program and memory sector A is for someone's name. You say the maximum is 32. You don't do error handling. You don't have memory management or anything like that. We're just talking at a high level overview here. Maximum 32 characters. So that's fine. But what happens if the input is greater than 32 characters? So let's say somebody did that. Okay. Well, thing is, memory sector A can only hold 32. So what happens is that everything after 32, 33, 34, on and on, they get, they overflow to the next location in memory, which is memory sector B. So that's a buffer overflow. You can think of the size of this memory location as the buffer and then you can see the overflow when you know it exceeds that maximum amount so the buffer of uh, memory sector a overflows into the next location so a buffer overflow if you want to think of it that way so uh, you know easy to talk about let's see it in action and we'll uh, we'll get some we'll get a little better idea of what it actually is able to do. So we're gonna go and I'm have a quick script. So buffer root. Okay. So here the difference between the memory address is 32, 32 characters. So that's the limit for this little script that I have. Name. How is this program supposed to work? That's it right there. Nothing too crazy. Uh, you know, we're under 32 characters. What happens if we exceed 32 characters? Alright, so let's take a quick look. And keep in mind, this is going to be the overflow. This is going to be written in the next location in memory. Well, what is this cat Etsy password? We're trying to look and see what that uh, password file is. So let's see what happens we're going to do a buffer overflow right now. So let's take a look. All right, there you go. I mean, what it did is the next location in memory just read this as its own command and it executed that command. That's a buffer overflow. So you see we have, I mean, you know, I'm not, I don't have my passwords in here or anything, but I mean, it's it still dumped the, the contents of the Etsy password file. So let's do uh, a couple more examples and then I think you'll get the idea of what buffer overflows are and why they can do a lot of damage. So next one, we're just going to see, can we create different files? Yeah, we can. See that? Malicious file right there. And we just made that because this is in the next location in memory. It's just, you know, it's just reading it as a touch command. So. Uh, what else can you do? Can you download stuff? Yep, you can do that too. So let's do that and uh, You know kind of really hammer home what uh, What we can do here with this so again the new memory location is starting at wget right there Oops. And what I'm just downloading uh, Apple repository uh, Enterprise packages extra packages for enterprise Linux, but the point is you can download anything I just did a wget from, you know, from this uh, from this program. Think about that. Okay, this program is just like a quick, oh, what's your name? Oh, hi, hi, Scott. You know, but because of this buffer overflow, I was able to go and completely go outside of that program and and just, uh, you know. Uh, use wget to download something. So that's kind of the idea with buffer overflows is that it allows arbitrary code execution where you can even go and I mean you can even open up a shell 
if you have uh, persistence, you know. So, not persistence, but, uh, you know, if you're available at that machine at the time that you're doing it. It doesn't always work that way. So, you know, bin sh, we have a shell. And if we just go right there, you're at the root of my whole server. So, you know, think about the damage that you could do. Think about all the kind of stuff that you Hopefully that was uh, clear enough, and uh, stay tuned for future videos.